Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast, a show for anyone wanting to level up their travel hacking lifestyle. I'm your host, Julia Menez. I'm a travel hacker, coach, speaker, Filipina American ENTJ who loves solid travel gear and using shortcuts on spreadsheets. On this show, I'm on a mission to bring you travel hackers from all walks of life to help you level up your travel hacking game. We dive into credit cards, miles, points, strategy, mindset, and the secrets behind how to travel the world for next to no cost. So let's get hacking. And one of the things, honestly, like along with just exploring while working or workcationing, um, it's allowed me to kind of date in bigger cities because I can not, I could, you know, go somewhere two or three hours away, meet someone on a, the Bumble app there and like get my own hotel randomly and like not have to like drive back after a date at 2 a.m. or something. And so, yeah, it's also helped my dating life, I think, to travel hack. Hello, travel hackers. You just heard a clip from Kelly Gagnon from F the Joneses. Kelly is hacking everything as a location-independent full-time side hustler. She is house hacking, travel hacking, dating hacking, you name it. And we are going to be discussing exactly what that means in today's episode. Additionally, Kelly and I discuss how one of the best productivity hacks we found, both in travel hacking and elsewhere, has been simply to ask somebody your questions. It's seriously such a time saver. And I know it can be daunting to reach out and ask, either because you're afraid that person is never going to get back to you, or even worse, you are going to get an unnecessarily mean response on certain internet forums. So to help with spreading the joys of traveling for free, especially to people who have previously felt super confused or like this hobby just wasn't meant for them, I offer completely free 30-minute coaching sessions for you to pick my brain and ask me your travel hacking questions. You can sign up at calendly.com slash geobreeze, and I will put a link to that in the show notes for you. Hope to talk to you there soon. And now on with the show. Hey, Kelly, welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me, Julia. Of course, we're so excited to have you here today. So before we jump in to all of your different hacks with travel hacking, house hacking, side gig hacking, dating hacking, <laughs> before we jump into all of the different hacks, Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the game of points and miles. Honestly, about uh, three years ago, I ended a long-term relationship where I was traveling quite extensively. And um, after that, really realized I want to figure out how I can afford to travel anywhere I want, whenever I want on my own. Um, And by kind of dabbling in the house hacking and fire movement, found travel hacking Um, and opened up my first credit card other than the thousand dollar limit credit card I had since I was 16. Um, And that's kind of, yeah, two years ago I started and I've been um, enjoying traveling for free ever since. Nice. And for anybody who's not familiar with the FIRE movement, what is FIRE? Yeah, uh, financially, financial independence, retiring early. Um, it's basically a movement to be strategic uh, with your money early in life. So you're not working until you're 65. Uh, you are, quote, retiring early, whether that means continuing to work or not. You have the financial means to not work to fund your life. So you got your first credit card when you got into, after you got into the FIRE movement a little bit. What was your first credit card? I got the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So I accidentally did it right. Nice. It's a very, very common first card for people. It's one of the most highly recommended first travel hacking credit cards out there on the internet. And were you one of those people who slowly eased your way into travel hacking or were you one of those, I'm going to apply the three cards at a time? Uh, yeah, um, definitely the latter. Uh, I figured out really quickly and that one of my hacks is um, I own and operate a marketing business for nonprofits and all of my team are subcontractors. So I had the ability to cash flow uh, minimum spends for business cards just through uh, normal operating through my business. Very cool. And you have a lot of other side gigs in addition to your regular business as well. Can you tell us a little bit about all of the different ventures that you have going? <laughs> I don't know. I'll try to. We'll see. Um, I'm actually transitioning from being a uh, entrepreneur to a full-time side hustler is how I uh, want to see myself in my life in uh, 2021. I do rover dog sitting. I do um, house hacking through Airbnb. So I have two two residences and can uh, 
um, Airbnb them out. I take online surveys, Respondent. If anyone hasn't checked out Respondent, it's legit market research survey. Uh, definitely wonderful. I've dabbled in VIP kids. I'm currently uh, tutoring also. So kind of dabbling a lot of different things. Nice. And I'm sure some people are familiar with some of those things and aren't familiar with other ones. So can you describe each one a little bit more in detail? What is Rover? Oh, sure. Uh, Rover is a dog sitting and dog walking and house sitting app um, where you can connect with people looking for those services. So for me, I typically am location independent. um, And during COVID quarantine, I was in one place for the longest time I've ever been in the last three years of my life and decided I might as well do something productive to make money. So I started dog sitting and boarding dogs in my own home and then also house sitting um, in the same town I lived in to watch other people's dogs and kind of treat it like a vacation since I wasn't traveling. Cool. And what is house hacking? Yeah. So house hacking is uh, for most Americans, housing is the largest expense. House hacking is a way to offset it. I found it when I was traveling to Belize about two years ago and was like, hey, I have an empty two-bedroom, beautiful house in a historic neighborhood that I won't be in for almost a month. I might as well list it on Airbnb. That accidentally covered my mortgage. I then went to renting rooms while I was home, out of my home. Um, And that covered all of my housing expenses. Uh, So house hacking is, whether it be through Airbnb or just for finding roommates or owning a duplex and renting half of it that covers all your living expenses by uh, hacking it. Very cool. And then what is VIP kid? <laughs> um, so I'm realizing there are even more that I didn't talk about. But um, VIP kid is um, you're basically teaching adorable little kids in China online early in the mornings or late in the evenings. And it's a wonderful way to own your own schedule. They have a set curriculum. You just show up and act fun and silly. And um, it pays anywhere to 15 to $20 an hour. What is the experience like? Are they all adorable? Or how do you keep kids in front of the camera? Because I am sure, I am sure somebody out there is listening to this right now. And they're like, we are all virtual teachers now. I'm a teacher and I cannot wrangle my students when they're sitting at home and they run away from the computer. Literally can't do anything about it. Yeah. How do you handle that? (laughs) Good question. Oh, roll with it. Uh, Sing silly. Have as many props as possible. Um, the beautiful thing about VIP Kid, though, is it does have curriculum that's designed specifically for online learning, specifically to be visual and engaging. So I know that's a lot of what teachers are trying to figure out now, and VIP Kid is already done. But sometimes there are kids, you know, yelling at their parents in the background and not really paying attention, and you just roll with it or go back to singing ridiculously until they pay attention. <laughs> nice. And so all of these things let you be location independent. What locations do you normally find yourself in since you can choose pretty much anywhere? I try to stay places. And I think as I look towards my future, I want to be at places for longer periods of time. I'm a Midwesterner. So I have a house in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana and one in central Illinois. Um, I do hop between those two places, St. Louis and Chicago, quite often. Travel hacking has allowed me to, if I have a conference or a meeting or just want to spend five days in Chicago, to just do it. (laughs) But I'm probably, I said last year, this will be my last winter not being a snowbird. So we'll we'll see. I'm hoping to head towards warmer weather for at least January, February, March. And do you still have a permanent address somewhere? Because I know that sometimes when you're applying for new cards all the time, the banks will flag it as fraud. If they're like, oh, you just moved again. Somebody stole your identity, something like that. How do you handle that aspect while you're being location? I still have my original primary residence. It's now a full-time Airbnb um, listed as my primary residence is where my business is based. And I have an administrative assistant that kind of helps with all of that. So she's literally processing my mail there still and making it look like I'm there. So with all of your different side gigs, are there a lot of expenses that you have that you are able to use credit cards on in order to generate points and miles? because it's a business expense. So you get paid back for it through your business and that you don't have to just increase your regular day-to-day budget. I mean, just contractors, um, all my team are technically contractors. So that's anywhere from 500 to $5,000 a month um, just for paying them. Um, I have a lot of contracts with universities. So I'm ordering $1,000 to $5,000 print gigs and that's all generating money that we're then going to be um, submitting an invoice to be paid back. On cards. And that's been wonderful for me to be able to do that. Uh, how do you put payroll onto credit cards? So when they're contractors, they're invoicing you. 
And I highly recommend uh, for small to mid-sized businesses to look exactly how it's set up. So they technically are freelancers or their own business um, as opposed to payroll and they're invoicing me. So it's generally through PayPal. And I'm sure with all your PayPal hacks, I probably, you're cringing at the fact that I probably could have even uh, made more money, <laughs> uh, but I'm paying via credit card on PayPal. So what are some of your favorite credit cards to use for small businesses? What are my favorite? So um, I was positioning to, so in March of 2020, I hit location independent, 100%. I was at about 90% before that, um, where I had no meetings at any specific places. And so I actually opened up two Southwest, I probably didn't flag for this, two Southwest business cards. I'm um, in order to get my companion pass, uh, one under my EIN, one under my social security number in December to hit the middle of the beginning of February of 2020. Um, I also got the Capital and Spark card because I was planning to go to Spain and Portugal for the entire summer of 2020. So I wanted to get my uh, Southwest Companion Pass. So I got that. And then I was getting ready to use the Spend Eraser to get a decent flight to Spain and Portugal. I have a, I have a few cards. I don't, I'm going to be honest. I uh, love following people because I don't do things nearly as strategically. Um, I'm more like, let's work in the masses and all this cash flow is going through. Um, so I know I could be more strategic. But also we've had guests who are like, once you have that much cash flow coming in from businesses, like wherever it is, then you spend more time focusing on the business and the revenue and optimizing that rather than optimizing every single point. Because if all you have coming through is $5,000 of anything in a given month, because maybe you like you move to Thailand and like rent Hi. super cheap, <laughs> food super cheap. And you're like, all right, well, on the Plus side, I'm living up, living it up in Thailand. On the negative side, I have no cash flows, so I have to try really hard to find a Staples or something in Thailand in order to get like a fee-free visa <laughs> gift card. I don't even know if they have Staples in Thailand. I'm gonna guess not. But if you have your own business and a lot of side gigs that just generate these cash flows for you, that can be another way to just focus your energy. If you're like, I can't anymore with like the stacks and the manufactured spend. And everything else, if you're like, it just doesn't call to me, maybe allocate your energy towards starting a small business, getting some side hustles that can get you a lot of points and miles. It's a different way and a completely legit way to get a lot of points and companion Yeah, well. I, tell you, I love that. I've, never thought, I've always seen myself as a travel hacker failure that I'm not being as strategic, but thank you for um <laughs> Oh, no, a lot. Well, it's the dream where they're like, if only I can get this Etsy store off the ground, I can expense my craft supplies, I can get all of these different points and miles with like Joanne's fabrics and wherever else you're buying craft supplies. So if you have some kind of side business where you are buying something and then selling something, you're good. Like work on that. It's a lot more sustainable. Yeah, I just did an Airbnb a remodel of the kitchen that I'm sitting in right now. And even that, yeah, expensing all of that on cards. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> For sure. And so for anybody who has not experienced the glories of Companion Pass, tell us a little bit about Companion I haven't explored it's <laughs> the glory either. Um, I think for most travel hackers, like the first, and I don't know if you feel this way, but the first like notch in your belt is, I'm a real travel hacker. I got my Southwest Companion Pass and I flew Southwest quite a bit. And um, it allows for flexibility for me where I can book something and then just cancel right before um, book a couple things that might work and cancel later. So I was really working towards a year into travel hacking and getting my Southwest Companion Pass. So anyone can fly with me up to three changes per year uh, for free. Uh, so I achieved it at the beginning of February and have not flown anywhere since. Um, so I, you know, getting my Southwest Companion Pass in 2020 kind of burned a little, uh, but I'm hoping to, I have 160, 74,000 Southwest points. So they're hopefully in 2021, I'll be able to take people with me for free. Yeah, normally, if you can get your companion pass to register in January or February, that's the best time to do it because you would get basically buy one, get one free flights for the rest of that year and the rest of next year. So if we didn't have COVID. Kelly would get to pick a friend and she can change friends. Um, decide we're no longer friends. I have a new companion. Or, or no, I'm single. We can say it. Like, you know, break up with one guy or whatever. <laughs> well, I was thinking like all the girls trips. I'm just like ladies club travel hacking. I was just like, Kelly, I will be your companion and it'll be great. I'm a great wingman, <laughs> but we can 
I can pitch you on that later. But anyway, you can change who your companion pass person is up to like three times. And so it's like, buy one, get one free flights on Southwest for two years, up to two years. It's amazing. What are some of your favorite trips that you've gotten to use these points for? How do you yeah, use I think them? I use my points differently than most, I would say. Um, I like, like I say, to reach location dependent. I present at a lot of conferences already. So a lot of my travel, somebody else is already paying for. But I like to extend travel always and then book things, book a few days on each side to like explore. I went to a conference in Austin, Texas, and I'd never been there. So I booked, you know, two days on each side and did some work and some writing from there. I like to use mine to workcation more than on structured um, trips. I did take my mother to a Joshua tree, like in California. Uh, So that's kind of a nice way to use it. Yeah. In general, I'm just constantly traveling and using travel hacking and points to have that flexibility. In uh, 2019, I had 46 free hotel nights um, through that. That's amazing. What's your preferred hotel? Um, uh, It killed me when I used my last Marriott points. It totally killed me. Um, I'm a Marriott lover. Uh, I like to cook when I travel instead of eat out. I um, am fairly frugal overall. My um, living expenses range from like $2,200 a month to like $3,000 a month. So I'm fairly frugal. I like to cook. So I love residence inns. Um, I kind of like moxie hotels, like they're hip and young and like, it's a fun place to work. Uh, so yeah, those are my favorites. Yeah. It's always a nice perk when you can loop in some work travel with your travel hacking, whenever you have to book anything for work, whether it's corporate or anything else, make sure you are loading in your frequent flyer numbers, your hotel loyalty numbers. And I mean, it, it it's nice for you because you're, you're completely entrepreneurial side gigging, all of that. Whereas I have to put everything onto my mm-hmm. corporate card. So every time I book a work trip, I'm like, oh, yes. that hurts me. So I, I have negotiated with clients. Like, I, I know you're paying for this, but I'm going to, and you know, it's wonderful when you're this small, I'm going to put on my card and then invoice you. And I know you're processes that you guys pay for it but I'm just going to sign up everything on my cards yeah it's such a nice part too when you can put work travel and get reimbursed for it and then you get the points for staying at the hotel the points for putting it on your credit card lots of different ways Mm -hmm. to stack as well when you're booking work travel super cool all right any other cool trips that you've gotten to take (laughs) with I wish I had not really I will tell you and one of the things I know uh I do appreciate all your support in my uh dating ventures too. And one of the things, honestly, like along with just exploring while working or workcationing, it's allowed me to kind of date in bigger cities because I can not, I could, you know, go somewhere two or three hours away, meet someone on a, the Bumble app there and like get my own hotel randomly and like not have to like drive back after a date at 2 a.m. or something. So yeah, it's also helped my dating life, I think, to travel hack. <laughs> That is a very unexpected um, perk of travel hacking, which we we have multiple episodes where people are like, so I was into travel hacking and then I looked super important on Instagram and then it really helped my dating life. There's there's so many different ways that travel hacking helps people's lives where you're like, I didn't even think of this. It helps my dating circles. I'm not just limited to like the 20,000 people in the town I happen to live in. I can take a vacation. And like you said, Ladies, a man is not a money plan. Have your own points and miles. Get your own hotel room. Do not sleep on a shady, questionable couch or worse. Just because you're like, oh, I can't afford a hotel room. Points and miles will literally yes. in situation. <laughs> New dating tip. <laughs> New dating tip. Have points and miles. It'll just, it'll help you. If the date goes well, you have a fancy hotel room. If the date did not go well, you have your own fancy (laughs) hotel room. So both of those things, they both, (laughs) they really come in handy. So just one more reason Mm -hmm. to get into travel hacking. So these days, you said most of your points and miles will come from Mm -hmm. your side gigs. Are there any just day-to-day expenses that you tend to put on your cards to generate a lot of points and miles? Are you... You said you're into groceries. Yeah, lot, so I, um, I'd say I've had pretty standard restaurant and grocery spends. And I just put po- post-it notes, literally put most of my cards that I'm planning on. I'll look at the beginning of each month or whenever things change, put post-its of what I'm spending. 
which card I'm using for what, and I'll pr- stay pretty consistent um, on which I'm using groceries or restaurants for. But yeah, other than that, I don't have a lot of large daily expenses. <laughs> Explain the post-it. So I, you have the, everything you have in your head and a lot of other travel hackers. I'm like, which card am I supposed to use for what? So I literally just put, you know, restaurants, Target. Um, like right now, what? Uh, see, I can't even tell you what card. Right now, some card I got back out that was put away. and put um, Target, Amazon. Is it the, uh, what, what card is that? Uh, anyway, but I didn't remember at all, but that's the new uh, 8X bonus. So I got the card out, wrote what I'm going to spend. And then every time I go to pay for something, I literally flush through all my cards and look at all the post-its and like, oh yeah, this is what I'm supposed to for, use for gas. I'm smiling from ear to ear hearing about your post-it note system because it's almost as good as people who are like, I have this really complicated spreadsheet. You'll be proud of me because you're an actuary. And I'm like, I'm actually not proud of you for this. <laughs> like, there are better tools. Some guy coded it for you already. Some people use card pointers. Some people use spreadsheets. Some people use post-it notes. But if you like the post-it note system, you do you. As you're doing fire, because you on your Instagram have a lot of really meticulous like budget tracking and all of these things too. How do you work that in with the credit cards? Is everything auto paid already or do you physically go in and log all of Oh, you're going to love this. This is the long way again. Answer. Um, I use QuickBooks self-employed. I'm set up as a single member managed LLC. Technically, I use QuickBooks self-employed. All of my credit cards transactions and bank account transactions show up there. I have separate business bank accounts for my marketing company and my um, Airbnb. And then literally I go through at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, and categorize and all of my credit card uh, transactions into the appropriate categories um, in QuickBooks self-employed. And then I also have like six spreadsheets where I double track it based on what my goal setting is. Um, So I'm probably touching every single spend, at least the initial spend when I categorize it, when I put it in my spreadsheet. So at least like three times. How much time does this take each week? I love it. Is it enjoyable for you? So I also think it it holds me. So people use Mint and QuickBooks self-employed is very similar to... um, well, dependent on what app you use, but there are a lot of budgeting tools um, and people should use it if it works for you. For me, the um, spreadsheet tracking helps me stay aligned. And then I'm already doing it once in QuickBooks self-employed. And this just lets me look at all my personal expenses. I love it. An hour to a week, maybe. Are you tracking your points in the same way? No, too, I'm just looking at points a once a month and I kind of look at it more passively. Yep. Guilty. Sometimes post-it notes too. <laughs> All right. There's an app for this too. It's called Award Wallet. If you guys need something to track all your points there, I know you're really big in the Southwest Kelly and like Southwest doesn't let them use this as a third party app. So you can't track Southwest or United or a couple other ones in there. But as far as Chase Ultimate Rewards and Amex and all of these things, I'm not affiliated with any of these apps. I just, I really like people. I'm just making people. Julia cringe with my like, no, I do everything longhand. <laughs> It's fine. I've seen your cute envelopes yeah. with your little emoji printed yeah, on Yeah, emoji on everything. Yeah. I think so. that I, um, for me, and I'm not sure that it will always work best for me, but for me as somebody that's really tried to rein in my spending, um, the, the physically moving everything until I know that I have this is my new structured amount of spending and um, helps me kind of keep myself in check in how much I'm spending. Fair enough. And what's the future plan for all the side gigs? Are there any particular ventures you want to expand? Is there a new one that you're looking to get into? Good question. Um, I've been thinking about that a lot. And I told myself I wasn't going to make a set decision until January of 2021. Uh, But I have been in the process of scaling back the service-based side of of my marketing business, which does decrease my cash flow significantly for travel hacking. But um, I'm looking at potentially full-time side hustling that will involve some freelance marketing and then also focusing on content creation of design life stuff in 2021. Very cool. All right. And with everything that you've learned with um, travel hacking, house hacking and everything, what would be your one-line piece of advice to everybody? Mm, Follow people that are three steps ahead of you. Learn from them. That's a good one. I do that all the time too. And then I invite them on this podcast. And then I'm like, 
Tell me all because, your secrets. Well, I'm downloading, downgrading my Chase Sapphire preferred to a freedom. I'm not sure which yet. Just to follow, because the people I follow that use it effectively, <laughs> like you, right? I can better, I think I'll do better and get more points that way, actually, just by following people that are ahead of me. I would say the best hack is just to find friends who will tell you their hacks because it is a, it can be a full-time thing tracking down all of these different new promos, what rules change, what is the latest hackity hack, like the level 17 hacks that isn't published on the blog as you're scrolling through forums and Reddit and flyer talk and all that. It can be a full-time thing, but we both have a lot of follow Fridays Mm -hmm. on our Instagrams. I think I have an entire highlight that's just, hey, here's other people to follow and Mm -hmm. they will do the heavy lifting for you. And it it saves so much time. So if you're looking for hacks related to productivity and time saving and how can I get so many different hacks with less effort of chasing down every single deal, just ask people and follow people and then just, you know, slide into DMs. It'll save you a lot, a lot of heartache if you just ask a person. We're nice. All right. And speaking of asking people who are nice, Can you give a travel hacking shout out to a friend whose travel hacking advice you find particularly useful on the internet? I think it's two. Other people should go check out. (laughs) Um, I I think everyone should follow Aunt Kara on Instagram. She's kind of the 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 OG of travel hacking, I think. Right, very good for people that are starting out and what content to follow. And then I will uh, give a shout out to uh, my friend Kyle with Pack Your Bag of Points. Um, He is if you. He just tries kind of everything to get the best. Uh, I think he and you both, you too, Julia, are, are like how many different strategies could they try to use to get the most return? And it's just kind of a fun, whether or not you try, it'll kind of open up your mind to new ideas on how to um, generate points. So it's important to be able to synthesize a lot of different people's strategies and say, okay, what piece of this applies to my life and what can I learn from each different person? So it's an interesting balance being able to say, okay, I I find this person's advice useful. But like when you mentioned with Kyla, I'm just, I'm in awe of how many points he can get just by going to different grocery stores because I live in an area that doesn't have grocery stores. There's a lot of different strategies out there for travel hacking. And it's so useful to just connect with different ones that resonate with you and then ask those travel hackers a little bit more about what they're thinking, their points and miles strategies. And we are all always excited to talk points and miles. So cool. And speaking of, yeah, um, you can, can find me at the F the Joneses, EFF the Joneses on Instagram, and then also F the Joneses.com. I actually didn't come up with it. Uh, I was kind of talking about what I wanted my life to be like and my priorities and intentional living and wanted to create a blog and originally it was an ex-boyfriend and I were going to launch it together and then I he came up with the name I broke up with him kept the name a lot of women do yes. that yes okay. it's right just at a different level they keep their name you're like I get the right. domain name <laughs> rather than the surname <laughs> it's cool well awesome Kelly it has been so great having you on the podcast today this was so enjoyable and entertaining and I've learned so much about different ways to do side hustles and side gigs. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. If any of the cards or other tools mentioned on today's call piqued your interest, please use the links in the show notes to apply or to learn more about any of the cards. Commissions earned from these signups help to support the podcast. Additionally, the single best travel hack I can recommend is finding friends who can show you about even more travel hacks, and it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to this podcast and share it with a friend. And if you would like to meet even more travel hacking friends, come join one of our travel hanging hangouts. We discuss behind the scenes tips, celebrate each other's wins, and mostly just enjoy being around other people who enjoy this hobby just as much as you and I do. If you would like an invite to the next one, just head over to geobreezetravel.com hangouts and sign up to be on the invite list. See you there. Take care and happy travels.